This week on The Wire, budget tip to boost sentiment. Meet Australia's over 2 million property investors and switching loans can save $48,000. G'day guys, my name is Tim Guest. I'm Australia's leading financial educator and I've trained over 18,000 people how to reach their financial goals, whether they be travel and lifestyle, early retirement, or home ownership. Welcome to The Wire, where we detail the top stories happening from the week in real estate for Thursday, the 4th of April, 2009. And we've got a couple of big top stories coming at you today. But before we get stuck in one, please, uh, we love your interaction with these posts. G'day, Ben, welcome to the video, mate. Love to see your interaction with these posts. So please like, love, angry. Maybe even give us a like, Ben, so we can see you can hear us. Uh, and then also we'd love to, uh, for you to share this with your friends and family so that they can get the value of this wonderful information as well. Um, and of course, keep in mind we've also got our Just House Tim video series that we do once every week. So if you want to get your questions, you know, if you want me to help you navigate the ma minefield of misinformation, experts and options, post your uh, question in and I'll see what I can do about getting back to it and uh, maybe even answering it live. Uh, if we don't answer it live, we'll always get back to you in person. But let's get stuck into the top stories happening this week. So we had the federal budget this week and this budget has been tipped to boost sentiment. So property groups say this week's federal budget will lift consumer sentiment. And that was as they also backed the plan for further infrastructure spending. So the Property Council of Australia says the budget's growth projections are reliant on Australians, Australia's household markets holding up. Now the headlines of surplus, infrastructure and tax relief are welcome. That's what PCA Chief Executive Ken Morrison said. This is a budget set for growth, but behind every number in the budget is the unknown effect on the housing market. It's another reason why a lot of these property council groups are quite worried about, obviously, Labor getting into government. Okay, Stockland Chief Executive Mark Stonart said that measures to assist with the rising cost of living, like tax relief and energy discount, will help improve this sentiment overall. Now, these measures will help give young people more opportunity to realise the dream of home ownership, and that's what uh, Mark Stannett said. However, it is critical that banks and lending institutions with the direct support of regulators provide responsible access to credit to help ensure the resilience of our housing market. So once again, one of the things that we've seen in terms of some of the slowdowns in some capital cities, keep in mind there's a lot of negative news out there, but the majority of markets are quite doing quite well out there, but it does really have a lot to do with the restriction of credit. However, as, you've taught, as you may have seen in the videos I've been doing over the last couple of weeks, we're starting to see those restrictions ease and some of the banks are starting uh, to open their books, particularly to interest only and investor loans. But moving on, let's get it stuck into our second top story happening today. So Australia has, and this has come from the ATO. Uh, the ATO data has released, has shown that Australia has 2,156,319 property investors, most of which own one investment property. So the ATO, ATO figures show that 71% of people who own investment property have just one, while a further 19% own two. Okay, now just uh, less than 1% of investors own five properties and less than 1% own six or more. Now it is this six or more investor demographic that has attracted the attention of opposition leader Bill Shorten in his pursuit of negative gearing changes. Even though there are only 0.9% of investors that have those six investment properties or more, he's, he's designed all these policies to limit, uh, you know, of course, keep in mind these negative gearing policies while uh, are being uh, sold as attacking rich property moguls. The simple fact of the matter is that over uh, two thirds of property investors have a taxable income of under $80,000. So really the people that are gonna be hit and hurt most are hardworking everyday Australians. Okay, now Shorten has conceded that the Labor's negative gearing capital uh, and capital gains tax reforms are not universally loved. There are 1, 300, uh, just over 1,300,000 individuals who own loss-making rental properties and 856,000 individuals who are in a uh, owner neutral or positively geared property with their rental investment and therefore they do not claim any negative gearing tax refund. So that's, you know, that's what are we talking about? Uh, we're talking, do some quick numbers. Oh, you're talking easily oh, six, uh, you know, 55, 60% of people uh, or property investors are negative gearing, okay? So, and the analysis of the impact of Labor's negative gearing policy by SWM uh, research suggests that likely outcomes include a shortage of rental property. So this is another thing that's gonna make it harder for young people in particular to get into home ownership is if these negative uh, gearing policies do get in, if Labor get in and they're able to get those policies through the Senate, which is also gonna be tough. Um, then 
basically what the research indicates is it's going to push rental prices up, making it harder for young people to get into the market. So that's going to cause a significant shortage of rental properties in the major cities, which ultimately will flow on to increases in residential re uh, rentals. Let's move on to our third top story for the week. So switching can save $48,000 and this has come from CanStar. So switching loans from the average standard variable rate to the lowest rates on the market could save a mortgage holder $48,000, almost $50,000 in interest over the life of the loan. That's according to financial comparison website CanStar. CanStar says the average standard variable rate for mortgages is currently 4.43% while the average of the lowest rates is 3.71%. Uh, and that's a difference in repayments of $159 a month, and that's based on a $400,000 home loan. This is one of the reasons why you know, we've been talking a lot about lending and finance over the coming weeks, and while we've been getting so many inquiries from the general public and our existing clients about looking at their rates and possibly getting them onto a better deal. So over the life of the loan, that would equate to $47,653 in interest saved. Now, although the Reserve Bank has, has this week kept the official cash rate unchanged yet again, CanStar finance expert Steve Mickenbecker says that the RBA looks likely to reduce their rate in the near future. He says recent economic data suggests the previous possibility of a rate increase is off the agenda altogether. Lenders are factoring this into their rate cuts with 274 fixed rate cuts this calendar year. Now, the bigger rate cuts are in the four-year and five-year terms with funding costs for Australian lenders following the downward trend for uh, US longer-term interest rates. So once again, really great news for people that have, a, whether it's like their own home loan or investments, certainly want to get in contact with our team, see what we can do about getting you some of these more competitive rates that are becoming available uh, in the market right now, guys. But look, really, that's the top three stories happening from the week in real estate this week. Like I said, love to see your interaction in these posts, so please comment, angry, like, love, um, post your questions if you've got something for uh, the Just Ask Tim uh, video series that we do once a week. And please share these videos with your friends and family so they can get the benefit of this very valuable information. Apart from that, guys, probably want to talk to you before the weekend. So have a great weekend, and I look forward to speaking to you early next week. Have a great night. See you guys.